Hi, this is Pris, and I'm going to share with you righteous indignation, um, a word from the Lord. And the Lord had said th these words to me, righteous indignation. Indignation means aroused by something unjust, unworthy, or mean. And the first scripture is Daniel 8, 19 to 20. And he said, look, I'm making known to you what will happen in the latter time of the indignation. For at the appointed time, the end shall be. Jeremiah 10, 10 to 13 says, But the Lord is the true God. He is the living God and the everlasting King. At his wrath, the earth will tremble and the nations will not be able to endure the indignation. Thus you shall say to them, The gods that have not made the heavens and the earth shall perish from the earth and from under these heavens. He has made the earth by his power, referring to Almighty God, hallelujah, and he has established the world by his wisdom and has stretched out the heavens at his discretion, ha, and when he utters his voice, there is a multitude of waters in the heavens, and he causes the vapors to ascend from the ends of the earth. He makes lightning for the rain, he brings the wind out of his treasuries. Malachi 3, 2-3 says, But who can endure the day of his coming? Ha! And who can stand when he appears? For he is like a refiner's fire and a fuller soap, or launderer's soap, it says in uh, New King James. He will sit as a refiner of fire and a purifier of silver. He will purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver, that they may offer to the Lord an offering in righteousness, which is, you know, why he's been working on us so hard of late. Isaiah 13, five to six. They come from a far country, from the end of heaven, the Lord and his weapons of indignation to destroy the whole land. Whale, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It will come as destruction from the Almighty. And then the word, um, Zaam, from Old Testament 2194. This is 2195, strictly froth at the mouth, actually it means. Fury, especially of God's displeasure with sin. Angry, indignation, or rage. So, um, to foment. So that's the, the definition for indignation. Deuteronomy 29, 26 to 28 says, For they went and served other gods and worshipped them, gods they did not know, and that he had not given to them. Then the anger of the Lord was aroused against this land to bring on it every curse that is written in this book. And the Lord uprooted them from their land in anger, in wrath, and in great indignation, and cast them into another land as it is this day. Ha, ha. Now the Lord, at the time that I got this, said something personal for me, and but I felt like it was not just for me, but many others. So I share with you that he said that jurisdiction will change. Jurisdiction is the power, right, or authority to interpret and apply the law, the authority of a sovereign power to govern or legislate, the power or right to exercise authority or control, the limits or territory within, within which authority may be exercised, but he said jurisprudence would not change. And jurisprudence is a system or body of law, the course of court decisions, the science or philosophy of law, department of law, so the law doesn't change. For me and for others, this means our authority in the spirit will be increased, but the judgments meted out by the courts in heaven will not. God is not a God of destruction, but a God of life and restoration. Some things that need to be restored must be torn down in many cases in the natural, and likewise the same in the spiritual realm. The hearts of men have grown cold, the Lord said, and the earth is groaning and changing as the day of the Lord is at hand. I asked the Lord what he wanted to say about righteous indignation, and he said, I have filled many hearts with my own righteous indignation, for I am not content to continue to see abuse and malice, greed and avarice continue unchecked. It is my love that leads to repentance, but my judgments are my love greatly provoked. Whoa, 
People don't want to hear that I'm God who allows terrible things to happen, but in the earth there is a law of sowing and reaping that is bringing about great change right now. The violence in the earth has increased. Perversion in the earth has increased. Idolatry is increasing. Rebellion and witchcraft is increasing. And likewise, my spirit will also increase to those who carry my presence. It will increase proportional to the evil increasing in the world. I told you great darkness would fill the earth and it is consuming all that it can. But I also said that my glory would fill the earth as the waters cover the sea. I said my glory would be seen upon you. It is reality more than what you see right now. Ha, so cling to hope. Ha, be prisoners of hope for I am coming and when I come I will not disappoint you. The only place of safety now is in me. I will restore all the locusts have eaten. I will restore all that has been robbed and stolen from my beloved ones. Things will never be the same again. I've told you, believe me when I say to you that you will see the Son of God arising with healing in his wings and you will trample the wickedness in the earth. I will reestablish apostolic power in the earth and I will establish my will in the lives of those who love me. It's not that it's not in the earth at all. It's just that it's going to be more. Do not be sad, although it is hard to see the changes. Rejoice, and again I say to you, rejoice, for your Lord is at hand. Let your gentleness be known to all men. That's Philippians 4, 5. Unity and generosity are in my heart. The cries of the fatherless and lonely come into my presence every day. The starving children and abused women, men, and children are in my heart every day, every hour, every minute. I see it all. I am Jehovah Ra. I see all that is going on in the world, even though you are blind to much of it. Do not, Rohi, I meant Jehovah Rohi, I see all that is going on in the world, even though you're blind to much of it. Do not lament the wicked being judged, but lament the innocent ones, for it rains on the just and the unjust as well. But those who know me will not be lost, but enter into my presence. Second Corinthians five sixty eight says, Therefore we are always confident, knowing that while we are at home in the body, we are absent from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We are confident, I say, and willing rather to be absent from the body, to be present with the Lord. Romans 8:18, 8, uh, King James Version says, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy compared to the glory which will be revealed in us. The times you've entered into require my perspective in order to fight as you need to, the Lord said. They also require me to fight for you more. Wickedness is arising, but I am with you. I will be with you whatever you go through. Isaiah 43, 2-3a says, When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you, and through the rivers they shall not overflow you. And when you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned, nor shall the flames scorch you. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, said the Lord. Come to me and spend yourselves on me. Fill your hearts with the word and proclaim it to the enemy's forces and proclaim it in song and in the marketplace. Demonstrate my love and pray for the sick, cast out demons and do the works I have given each of you to do. I don't expect you to do anything I don't ask you to do. My yoke is easy. Come to me, rest at my feet, and then you will be able to do only what I want you to do. No more, no less. Ha is all that I, is required. Many of you are putting hard burdens on yourselves and listening to those who would put more burdens on you than what is necessary. I've said to take, excuse me, every thought captive. Test the spirits. Do not give in to striving. I have not called you to strive, but to a unique, ha, an intimate relationship with me that will give rest to your souls. I have not called you to serve the kingdom of men, but to serve the kingdom of your God and Lord. I have given you so much in this nation, and you have thrown much of it to build your own kingdom rather than mine. Finances have been thrown down the toilet for entertainment and programs more than for the poor, the outcast, the fatherless, and widows. Resist the temptation to conformity for conformity's sake or coming under a control or dominating spirit. I've not called you to that. I've called you to freedom and not the law. 
I've called you to support the true work of the Lord with your tithes and offerings, but not to build mansions on earth, but in heaven. Your prosperity is never to serve only yourself. It is to serve me first. It is I who give you ability to make wealth, is it not? I am the God of all comfort, yet I am the God also of justice and righteousness and truth. And you must love the truth more than your own wants and desires. The love of money is the root of all evil. Love not money, love me. You cannot serve God and mammon, I've said. I do not give you a stone when you ask for bread, so watch how you treat those who lose everything in the days ahead. For I have called you to mercy and generosity, not to selfishness and pride. I am warning you ahead of time, for my judgments are now increasing in the earth. They are predetermined, and they will be allowed according to my will. I will give you the discernment if you ask. And if you stay in the word so that you will know when to pray against it or not to pray. So, that, you know, then you have discernment because, you know, discernment comes through the word a lot. You cannot stop what is predetermined in my heart for wickedness must be judged. But you will have authority to reverse what is not my perfect will. It has begun and nothing can reverse it. The door has been opened and you must make the choice to walk with me or to go your own way. Psalm 69, 24 says, Pour out your indignation upon them and let your wrathful anger take hold of them. Psalm 78, 49, He cast on them the fierceness of his anger, wrath, indignation, and trouble by sending angels of destruction among them. Psalm 119, 53 to 56, Indignation has taken hold of me because of the wicked who forsake your law. Your statutes have been my songs in the house of my pilgrimage. I remember your name in the night, O Lord, and I keep your law. This has become mine because I kept your precepts. Uh, none of us keep them all, so I'm not condemning. I'm just saying what the word is. Isaiah 10, 5 to 6. Arrogant Assyria also judged. Woe to Assyria, the rod of my anger and staff, in whose hand is my indignation. I will send him against an ungodly nation. And against the people of my wrath, I will give him charge to seize the spoil, to take the prey, and to tread them down like the mire in the streets. Take refuge from the coming judgment, Isaiah 26, 20 to 21. Come, my people, enter into your chambers and shut your doors behind you. Hide yourself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation is past. For behold, the Lord comes out of his place to punish the inhabitants of the earth for their iniquity. The earth will also disclose her blood and no more cover her slain. And then again, Isaiah 30, 27 to 33, judgment on Assyria. Behold, the name of the Lord comes from afar, burning with his anger, and his burden is heavy. His lips are full of indignation and his tongue like a devouring fire. His breath is like an overflowing stream which reaches up to the neck to sift the nations with the sieve of futility. And there shall be a bridle in the jaws of the people, causing them to err. <clears throat> you shall have a song as in the night when a holy festival is kept, and gladness of heart as when one goes with a flute to come into the mountain of the Lord, the mighty one of Israel. The Lord will cause his glorious voice to be heard and show the descent of his arm with the indignation of his anger and the flame of a devouring fire with scattering tempest and hailstones for through the voice of the Lord Assyria will be beaten down as he strikes with the rod. <clears throat> and in every place where the staff of punishment passes, which the Lord lays on him, it will be with tambourines and harps and in battles of brandishing. He will fight with it, for Tophet was established of old. Yes, for the king it is prepared. He has made it deep and large. Tophet refers to hell. He has made it, um, its pyre is fire with much wood. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, kindles it. Think of Assyria as representing also um, <coughs> Muslim nations. Isaiah 34, 2 to 5. For the indignation of the Lord is against all nations and his fury against all their armies. He has utterly destroyed him. He has given them over to the slaughter. Also their slain shall be thrown down. Ha! Huh. Their stent shall be rise from the, rise from the corpses and the mountains shall be melted with their blood. All the host of heaven shall be dissolved. And the heavens shall be rolled up like a scroll. All their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falls from the vine and as fruit falling from a fig tree. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. 
Indeed, it shall come down on Edom and the people of my curse for judgment. And that's it. God bless you.